Hello, and welcome back to my submarine tutorials. Uh, last time, I had gone through the concept of making uh, a hydrofoil-based depth maintenance system, which, by the way, I completely forgot to uh, copy-paste the mechanism for myself, but I will take care of that. Don't worry. Uh, it should be up on the workshop for you guys to also take apart. So what I'm here for, in this time, is uh, back to the really basic of basics, the whole design here. Uh, one of the biggest things about uh, the air pump based systems, which by the way I'm going to thin this out just a little bit and just have like it hollow. And my character is going to fall through the ground, which maybe isn't the best thing, but yeah, I'm just going to like showcase how this is going to work. We are going to have this thing made completely out of metal. We're going to place, I don't know, let's place our engine. So like RRTG battery combo. We'll just like do something like that and that's going to be powering our engine and we are going to put like the AI in the front. Like I'm not really ma making this to make a good, a good ship. I'm just going to be making this to, uh, and I'll just put a card slot here. I don't need one here. Have a naval AI and then I'm going to have uh, well, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Should I use, like, a keel or stabilization? Because that's something I don't know. Either way, I'm going to do something like just streamline this a little bit. I'm not going to go for anything fancy. And in fact, I'm probably going to just cut to when I'm done. So I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, I have a shell over this. Now, there are a couple ways to stabilize this as well, and I'm just kind of thinking of the benefits and drawbacks here. Uh, let's just see, does this thing float first off? If it doesn't float, then we have the advantage. This thing needs to sink naturally. And not only should it sink naturally, but it should also stay level. As we can see, this thing does sink, but it also keels over. One thing we could do to help this is to put a keel on this. Another thing we can do to help this, though, is not just put a keel on this, but instead like put something like an air bladder on it, which, if strong enough, would help it... Uh, maintain its death, uh, altitude, but I'm not sure how well this would work. The issue is, so long as our buoy is below the mast line, it's not going to stay level. On top of that, it needs, it can't be too strong. Let's just raise the buoy up a little more. And provided that the buoy doesn't uh, get too far off this should act like an air bladder and bring the buoy back up above the center of mass I need to see if this is the case it isn't the case unfortunately with the way this works we're not actually going to be able to keep it upright like this so what we also need would be some lead This is one of the few cases where I would actually brute force balance a craft like this. Because we also need to artificially increase its weight anyway. By doing this, we are forcing the center of mass to be below the buoy. And by having these here, we're also like forcing the buoy to actually be above. 
Now we also need to pay attention to the angle that it's floating at. Right now it is 5. That's not really good. Uh, we want this angle to be a little less, so we're going to take off some of the buoy, uh, the balance in the front, just so that it naturally is a little more balanced. And it does appear that it is balancing out now. Oh, it's still like 5 degrees. Hmm. Doing this should adjust it a little too much. Now this is causing it to nosedive. So yeah, as you can see, building a submarine like this is a balancing act. Because you don't want it to be like this. You need to see if this is okay. Nope. This isn't okay. So we're going to remove that. It does appear to me that... That it's just naturally going to pitch up more because it back weighs. And we can only really do so much. So doing this, for example, should rebalance it. Because again, we kind of want that buoy to be above the center of mass. Right now, it's actually a little before. That's going to lift the nose up. So it does appear that we don't need the air bladder after all. On a larger ship, that might be useful though. And then, like this, because of the lead beams, it's going to stay relatively level. Now this is going to continue to lose altitude. So here's what we need. We have like our engine in place, correct? Yes. And I'm quite happy with that. So let's just Listening. tell this thing, I don't know, your sea vehicle, you're going to travel here. Moving now. So this thing is going to be able to move, however there's an issue here, and that it's going to continue to lose depth because of its weight. And in fact, the air bladder probably helps it a lot more. Let's try putting that back in, just because I'm actually kind of curious. I don't have all the answers here, so if I put this in here, what happens? It continues to lose altitude, but its uh, roll is correcting itself a lot more. That's what I want. So I am going to keep it like this. So we're continuously losing depth, however, if we put in an air pump or a, he a helium pump, which really doesn't do much, suddenly we are gaining altitude. So say we put an autom a pair of automated control blocks to either side of this, and I'm just setting it so that it is specific to this, but you don't need to worry about this. We're going to set the, uh, so if it's greater than negative 50, then set the, uh, what is it called? It would be air pumps, uh, to off. And this is going to turn these air pumps off, currently switched off. So now we are going to lose altitude. Now, if we set this one to be on, and honestly, we don't need to worry about the limit, so I don't really need to worry about that. And then just say activate when altitude is less than negative uh, 50. Then what it's going to do is it's going to turn the air pop on when it hits that depth. Now. I am like seeing a problem here, and it's just not able to dive, so I'm going to replace this. 
because again its pitch is messed up yeah I'm just going to keep it here because it seems to be not making much of a difference because of the fact that its buoy is above its center of mass it's going to basically stay balanced no matter what in fact what I'm thinking of doing is increasing the amount of lead so that's actually a bit heavier and it actually starts to lose altitude a lot faster at a much better clip which as you can see it is so it's at negative 45 negative 46 and negative 47 and again it's kind of at that angle again negative 48, negative 49, negative 50 and now it's turning on and off and it's going to basically stay at this value forever now. One thing you could do to help it a little bit would be to balance it in some way so I would just put like some lead box until the hitch becomes zero so in this case now it's negative it looks like that was too much so it's going to have problems but yeah you can kind of see how this is going to go uh, this thing is going to be able to make uh, maintain its altitude under normal circumstances obviously I messed with the balance a little bit and so uh, only now is it really going to be able to adjust again uh, but it is going to uh, like in this case the air pumps now on permanently so this is actually going to force the nose up a bit in fact, a better way to do this would be to have uh, to basically have it only really applying to this area. So if I like walled this off with beam two meters, then it like it would be changing its angle with the air pump. So now, for example, the buoy is actually further forward, which is a good thing. And now its angle is going to change. But you want a more subtle effect than this. So I'm going to instead uh, want the buoy to be further th forward than the center of mass. So we're going to do this. And this is essentially a problem because of the way I have it set up but still like you can imagine using such a system if you were clever with how you set it up you could have it technically have more uh, volume towards the front which would lead to the buoy being a little in front of the center of mass which would result in it actually having a change in its angle Which, by the way, this thing's moving in reverse, which isn't helping things. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm also going to teleport to it. So as you can see, it is diving. And now that it's within the right angle, it's going to start leveling out. And that ever slight difference in its balancing causes it to change its uh, uh, angle, basically. And then it oscillates, which means it's eventually going to hit uh, zero. If I'm right. Like, it's eventually going to smooth out. Well, it's oscillating between two and three, so that counts. So anyway, so this is an example of a submarine 
that uses an air pump. Now, as you can tell, this system is actually much simpler to set up with ACVs. And on top of being extremely simple to set up with ACVs, it also is uh like like not only is it this simple but you could also have like multiple air pumps in like multiple subsections this way using off of just this instead of having to have like a single centralized uh, system and balancing and the design of the craft itself that is perhaps far more important than the entire rest of the design. And then another thing, just like to recap this last part, well, this thing I mentioned early on, that having some way of con making sure that the buoy is above the center of mass, like I did put in like an air bladder-esque thing, which yes, you can have systems with, like, with air bladders that are just pressurized tanks that give it a constant like upwards force like a fish does to keep it upright which I just used uh, light alloy but it turned out light alloy, alloy doesn't really do that much for this craft because of how small it is lead however weighs does a lot more for it and you can use that as a way to weigh down the craft so that its center of mass is below its buoy and thus guaranteeing that you're uh, going to stay upright all the time. I don't normally use this technique. I normally use like a uh, PID system, but for like submarines like this that are using air pumps, it's exactly the kind of system you really need to keep it simple. Anyway, this has been my second submarine tutorial uh, showing air like showcasing air pumps and air pump based uh, systems. I'm going to show you one other thing and that is it is a system that uses uh, EIDs and uh, these uh, propellers in a way that acts kind of like the uh, uh, hydrofoils. Not like just holding it down under the water, but like keeping it at like certain angles at certain times. Uh, just as a demonstration that it's possible and that you could build a craft this way. And so I'll see you then.